Now before we get into this video, I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a warning. There is some content in this that is very graphic. I've tried to keep some of it out because I know how some people are with stuff like this. So if you continue into this video, just know I gave you a warning. Let's begin. This was back before Google Dot web pages were, for the most part, still very basic HTML with JavaScript. Hardly anyone used CSS. Only discussion boards and some banking sites had anything approaching mature front end, back end combinations, etc. This was the early net.real deep web stories, not just one illicit activity online. I was browsing through random blogs, GeoCity sites, and the like, just going from link to link. Eventually I came upon an odd page. It appeared to be random thoughts from different people, but for the time it was well designed. The messages seemed to be cryptic in nature, like several people trying to pass secret notes. I started through the source. I started through the source, and hidden in the comments of a JavaScript were various IP addresses. I gathered all the IPs into a text file and began enumerating. Some were routers with banner messages I could tell net to almost all of them were universities. Warning, this is a secure system at University of blah blah. The default Cisco credentials from back in the day worked on most of them, but I didn't really poke around. A few of the IPs were web servers with little to nothing on them. Mostly Apache on Linux or some BSD. At least one IIS server, I can recall. I finally came upon this web server with a huge directory of HTML files and TIFF images, with a few smaller subdirectories containing the same. NSLOOKUP returned no reverse records for the IPs. A visual route traced it back to as far as Colorado. The HTML files appeared to be records of a psychologist or someone in the mental health profession that kept files for their patients. The images were of faxes, apparently for both military and medical nature. As I browsed through the subdirectory, back to the parent, at the top was a new HTML file named something like one hello there HTML. The timestamp was from right that minute. I opened it, and a plain text message said, We see you. No quotes, all lowercase. About 15 seconds later, the server dropped. My computer then froze, and everything wiped from it. I don't know what I stumbled into, but apparently there is something on there that they don't want us to see. I probably won't go back on, but it's been a very long time since I have and I still have questions. So, I'm a 17-year-old young boy living in South Germany, in Hessen to be exact. I'm a German, so I have piss poor English, so bear with me. I live in a pretty loud neighborhood with crazy stuff going on. I don't care if you believe me or not, but I know what I experienced, and all of this is true. So, one day, at school, my friend, let's call him Jack for privacy reasons, told me about this deep web. Back then, I had absolutely no idea what it was. He said you can order weed, buy illegal stuff from it. I thought that was the only thing that could be found on the deep web, but I was very, very wrong. My friend invited me over to his place, so we could check this out, but I said we should go to my house, and he agreed. So after school we went to our house. He told me the instructions on how to use the deep web, so I followed him. I downloaded a Tor browser, and some free VIP ban. When we had everything, we used the search engine. We found some random wiki called Ice Rocket and off we went. Our journey started off with us just looking at some weed on sale 
and some guns, and we were exploring a lot. But of course we didn't buy anything. We accessed some sites that were random sites. It was completely blank, but then pop-ups started showing up. There were a lot of links leading to some random sites. So we clicked on this random one. The site was named something like Child Experiments. I told my friend that this was some deep shit and we should probably leave the site. But his curiosity got the best of him. He started scrolling down and there were some pictures of things that I'm not going to talk about. I was honestly disgusted and I told him to leave it immediately. But he just didn't. I just regretted it and I wanted to shut down the computer. Plain and simple. Then there were some videos and one was named something that I I just can't think about right now. It scarred me. He went to click on it and what I saw next haunted me for the rest of my life. I can't. I just can't explain what I saw. I felt heartbroken. There was a child struggling and screaming. I'm just going to say that. What sicko would do this to somebody? Then all of a sudden a chat box appeared. A guy named Fire435 or something said, Hey, you enjoying this? We didn't know what to answer with. Hey, I'm talking to you. Then a live video stream showed up. It was of us. Us being recorded through our webcam. I didn't know it was on. We panicked and tried shutting down our computer, but it didn't react. Why are you trying to leave? We're just hunting for our next victims. Me and Jack were almost in tears. Then that sicko read out our street address, name, age, and literally everything personal. Jack then unplugged the computer and it shut down, thank God. All of a sudden, Jack's mobile beeped. It was a message from an unknown number, and it read, I'm going to find you. Jack immediately blocked the number. We had a short discussion on what the hell just happened. We were worried for our lives. What if this dude really did find us? Months later, we almost forgot about this experience, until there was a delivery for me. It didn't have a name written on it. But I was curious, and I went to see what was inside it. I wish I had never, ever opened that box. There, I found a picture of a human heart. The box was full of child's parts. I screamed and dropped the box immediately and called the cops. They investigated and said that if they found further information, they would let us know. After that... Everything turned back to normal, and I've never heard of that shit again. But I'm pretty damn sure the guy who talked to us that night delivered the child's parts to us. Sometimes I wonder why this world is just so cruel. And for everyone who hasn't been on the deep web, I suggest to all of them, stay out, or your life will be in deep danger if you go in the wrong places. Don't do what I did. A Reddit user who shared this story, it happened to his friend. This was back in 2015. His friend is a regular deep web user and would buy loads of like stolen Apple products and drugs, etc. One day, like usual, he orders his drugs. Not from the usual seller, though, but from a new one. He asked the seller to deliver the drugs in a movie case or something that his mom wouldn't notice. One of his biggest mistakes was that he didn't realize what would happen next. The package had arrived, but to his surprise inside it, there was a bit of paper that read, Something has happened. If I were to send it to you, it could be traced back to me and we would both be caught. Meet me at the elementary school at 7. We will just do this in person. 
He went there by telling his mom that he was staying at his friend's house, the Reddit user's home, and that his friend had warned him to take a knife just in case things went south. He reached the school and noticed a man in a jeep with the plates covered up in duct tape. He got out of the vehicle to get the drugs and then left in his car after paying him. To his surprise, he could see the man's car following him till he reached his neighborhood. So to shake him off instead of leading him to his house, which would have been a very bad idea, he made some random turns and made sure that he lost him. Then he went and pulled into his garage. But the serious incident happened that night. He could hear the sound of a car engine. Two men were seated in the same car that followed him. The driver was the drug dealer. The second one had very messy hair and a trashy t-shirt. And while it was hard to see, my friend could almost make out a scar from a massive burn or something on the side of his neck and on his face. He was watching them from the window, and the second one often looked into the window where he was standing, and then he lost his cool. Now he didn't care about the consequences and called the police after moving away from the window. The police asked him to grab a weapon to defend himself just in case they would try to enter the house. Finally, he could see a figure coming out from his mom's room with a knife in his hand. With full force, he was charging towards him after shutting the door behind him, but then he grabbed the pot and hit the man's head. After turning on the light, he noticed it was the second guy from the car and stabbed him in the shoulder with the knife he dropped. Then in a few minutes, he could hear the police sirens and both men were arrested. The Reddit user then says, but my friend's mom had been killed. Her throat had been slit and she had 23 stab wounds and duct tape covering her mouth. He was charged with possession of drugs and lost his mom because of his actions. He didn't buy any drugs from the deep web again. And now he has to live with that for the rest of his life, just because of his actions. The Reddit user then says, My friend has still not been the same since. He spiraled into a deep depression. Please, don't go on the deep web. There's nothing but bad things on there. This next one was a real deep web story that was written by a specific Reddit user, which was experiencing a lot of the deep web stuff. When he was browsing the deep web one day, on his laptop using Tor, by clicking one of the nameless hidden wikis, he came across a website containing nothing but a wall. Before he was going to click close, he saw a man wearing a mask emerging from the wall and greeted him with a hey there, thinking this was a video prank. He just kept watching. After a while of him just watching, staring at the screen, he began to speak again. Are you going to speak? He asked. He proceeded to type on the keyboard. Not the keyboard. Speak, he said. At this point, he was a bit frightened. Who are you? He asked. I'm your friend, he proceeded to say. At this point, he was scared. His face was in full of terror. He began to start showing his fright. Come on, friend. Don't give me that scared face, he said. This is when it got extremely frightening. Just one second, my friend. I will get your address and I'll come talk to you in real life. He proceeded to type on his computer. Frantic, the Reddit user tried closing the window down and getting out of the video. That won't work, he said. Before he had time to track his address, he got a screwdriver and removed the back and the battery from the laptop. It's been some time now, and he hasn't come. He didn't get enough time to get his address. Or did he?
there have been many instances on Deep Web where users have repetitively found terrifying live streams. Some guys stumbled upon <clears throat> some guys stumbled upon a live stream where a girl was sitting in a chair and commanded people from the chat window to tell her what kind of abuse she should do to herself. After many cuts, bruises, eye gouging, the girl eventually killed herself on the live stream. This is not only a case where people have brought harm to themselves on a live stream in the deep web. These live streams are popular known as Red Rooms, where even ISIS has started using this platform to conduct beheadings and murders. Unlike these people, I'm very happy just watching bubblegum shit in Netflix. So I just want to say, don't use the fucking deep web. There's nothing that comes good from this. Now, if you made it to the end of this video, just know I did warn you. I've never gone on the deep web myself, but I don't think I'll ever end up going on there. I've had a few friends that have actual personal experiences, like going on to the Silk Road, stuff like that, but I'm not going to get into that. If you would like to hear some of my friends' actual experiences, let me know down in the comment section. Make sure to like, comment, and if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe because we're doing nothing but growing. I don't think we've stopped growing a lot in the past few weeks. I do want to thank all of you that have joined the community. It does mean a lot to me. And I'm sorry for my voice being so, like, blah lately. I'm still dealing with a sinus infection on top of my acid reflux situation. So hopefully that'll be over and done with soon. Well, the sinus infection part. Kind of can't get away from the acid reflux part. But with that being said, make sure to check out the links in the description as well. All of my socials are in there. And make sure to check out the Gmail if you want to submit a story. I would very much enjoy being able to tell some of my subscriber stories. Once again, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not subscribed already. But with that being said, stay safe, stay scary, and I'll see you in the next one. Don't use the fucking deep web. It's pretty obvious at this point, but just don't.